Hello YouTube, Dave here again. Uh, welcome to a new video. I just wanted to do a quick look at the newly released D&D Beyond. Uh, what it is is it's a set of online tools, digital tools, uh, that you can use with the uh, for the 5th edition role-playing game. Uh, right now it's during, it's just in the first stages of its open beta, uh, so not all the features are currently available. Uh, right now we're into the beta phase 1, uh, which includes the compendium listings and forums. Uh, the beta phase 2 is the one that I think I'm looking the most forward to, which is the character builder and character sheet. And uh, beta phase 3 is for homebrew, integration, and campaign management. So that one should be kind of interesting too. Uh, but what I want to do here is just look over some of the features that are available uh, right now uh, with the open beta. Uh, the way to get this is just to go to dndbeyond.com and uh, sign up for the, uh, to participate in the open beta. Uh, one thing that is kind of interesting is that you do require a Twitch account in order to log in and actually use these features. Uh, I'm not sh quite sure why it's Twitch at this point in time, um, since that's usually, my understanding, is just an online streaming service for things like, I know a lot of uh, video games and even some of the like the online D&D games are done through Twitch, so uh, it's kind of interesting why you need a Twitch account and not just use your regular Wizards of the Coast account uh, to access this. Uh, I can, you know, look into that a little bit more uh, as time goes on. I wasn't actually going to bother at first, uh, simply because I didn't really want to sign up for Twitch, but uh, it was pretty easy to do, thankfully, and like I said, I wanted to get this video out. So uh, let's have a look here at what's available during the Phase 1 of the beta. So we have the ability to look at uh, compendiums, spells, items, monsters, and forums. Uh, so clicking on Compendium, what it is, is it's a breakdown of just some of the gaming rules for 5th edition. Uh, and it is, uh, everything that's in this right now at this point in time is based on the SRD uh, for 5th edition to be used uh, as part of the Open Gaming License. Um, so what that means is there are going to be certain things that are copyrighted or trademarked uh, aspects of Dungeons and Dragons that Wizards of the Coast hold that are not available through this uh, this set of tools. Uh, let's see if I can get a better angle here. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of these, uh, but if you want to read the options, I'll try to zoom in a little bit. Uh, let's just have a look here at uh, using ability scores, for example. So if you wanted to know about uh, things like you know uh, how to use like dexterity. Uh, checks. It kind of goes into the information here, gives acrobatics, sleight of hand, so it goes into all the different descriptions of what the skills are and as well as what some other options uh, very well may be. Uh, you can add your dexterity modifier to your attack roll and damage roll when you're attacking with a ranged weapon. Uh, you can also add it to your attack roll when you're attacking with a melee weapon that has the finesse property. Uh, so it actually goes into everything that the stats can do, which is pretty cool. And uh, again, you just kind of use that uh, for all of the uh, different things that you would want to look up. Uh, one thing that is missing at this point in time is the ability to do a search uh, on the compendium for a particular rule. So if you're looking for something specific, you would have to scroll through the available options, see which one uh, would be the most appropriate fit for what you're looking for, and then read it through there. So hopefully a search feature is something that will come through in the future. Uh, so the, the right now this is the compendium for the basic rules, and like I said, it just goes over all that, uh, that information. Uh, the next thing I want to look at here would be the spells. So this is the spell list. Uh, so what's interesting is that it is, again, it's based off the SRD. So some of the names may be a little bit different, like Acid Arrow not being called Melf's Acid Arrow, uh, things along those lines. Um, but what's kind of interesting is you can actually search it by the individual classes if you want. Uh, so you got, you know, Bard, Cleric, Druid, Paladin, Ranger, Sorcerer, Warlock, and Wizard. So if I want to just look at the Ranger spells, uh, for example then you can click on it and highlight the icon and it will bring up the list of spells for the ranger. Um, now if you wanted to say after looking at the ranger, look at the wizard, one thing to keep in mind is that it will highlight as many of these as you click on. So if you don't want to look at the ranger spells anymore, uh, you'd have to select that and it would bring up the general list and then you can click on the one that you want. Uh, if you're looking at just a regular spell, one of the things that I do actually kind of like about this is not only does it give the spell description, uh, but it will also say what class it's available for. Uh, so for example, in this case, we have uh, Acid Arrow being available as a wizard spell, and if you looked at something like, say, Acid Splash, uh, you can see that it's available for the Sorcerer. Let me get it to focus there. Uh, 
Anyway, it's available for the Sorcerer and the uh, the Wizard, which is pretty cool. So it's nice that it has that little uh, detail in there. Uh, this gives the basic description. You can also click on the spell page if you want. And it just kind of brings up everything with a neat little picture. I don't know if they all have uh, pictures for it, but uh, still pretty cool to see uh, that feature in there. Uh, it does also give you the ability to search. Uh, so unlike the Compendium, if you wanted to just look up a single spell, like for example, uh, Fireball, you can just search based off of that. Whoops, helps if I spell it right. All right, and it brings up the fireball spell. So that's a really useful thing. I think that's something that at this point would get more use from me than anything else. Uh, as far as, uh, like, I really probably wouldn't bother too much with the compendium. Uh, the other thing we have here would be items. Uh, so these are magic items. Uh, that you can get throughout the game and one of the things that is really cool is I like how it's broken down like in the Dungeon Master's Guide they're all done basically by just alphabetical order uh, but this one will actually let you look up spells or the uh, not spells magic items based off of the actual category so if you were looking for uh, just for example the wondrous items you can click on that And it will now bring up the listing of all the different um, wondrous items that don't fall into other categories like potions, rings, rods, wands, staffs, and so forth. Uh, weapons, armor. So it's nice to have them actually separated that way. It's a little bit of an organizational thing that I think is better uh, than what's in the Dungeon Master's Guide. Just because the DMG, like I said, everything's just thrown in in alphabetical order. Um, again, you also have the ability to search by names. Rarity uh, requires attunement. Uh, there are tags, and you can even search by magical bonus, which is pretty cool. Uh, the one that I want to click on next is monsters, and this one's a little bit disappointing, simply because it is, again, restricted by the SRD. So, for example, one of my two of my favorite monsters in all of D&D is the Beholder and the Mind Flare, both of which are aberrations, and neither of which are in here. So the only aberrations currently available... Whoop, are the Aboleth, Chul, Choker, Gibbering Mouther, and Atyug. So things like the uh, Mind Flare, the Beholder, uh, ones that I've, you know, again are some of my favorite monsters, not available because they are not part of the SRD. I'm hoping that that's something that changes in the future, but at this point in time it is based off of that. So you're going to be uh, missing quite a few things here. Uh, let me just see what happens if I do a search for Beholder. and nothing comes up. So, like I said, unfortunately, that's a little bit of a downer. Uh, and then the last thing that we have is just the forums. Uh, so, you can have a look here. It gives some of the information. Uh, looks like, you know, user posts. Uh, I've never really been big on forums, so this is something that I'll probably never use. Um, but, if you wanted to uh, go through and look at everything uh, that they have available, follow the conversations, uh, then you can certainly do that. Uh, so those are the features that are currently available on uh, D&D for D&D for Beyond as part of the first uh, wave of the open beta test. Uh, it's interesting, I'm looking forward to uh, phase two basically with the character builder and character sheet. Uh, I don't really know what to expect for the beta phase 3 with the homebrew integration and campaign management. <laughs> uh, that's probably um, something that would also likely be useful. Uh, as far as this one goes, I'm a little disappointed that it's limited to the SRD. Uh, it's kind of unfortunate that it doesn't have the class information, uh, even though it doesn't have, you know, I know the character builder is part of the second phase, but it still would have been nice to have gone into the compendium and be able to look up uh, some of the class features that the various classes have uh, because class features tend to make up most of the rules-based questions that I see. Other than that, the uh, the spell feature, uh, the ability to search spells by name is really useful. 
Uh, and I think that this could be a really great resource, uh, especially for DMs that aren't afraid to have things like laptops at the table. Uh, it'll probably make a lot of looking up time, hopefully a lot shorter, and again, if they include a search option and compendium, that this could be one of the most useful things that they put out. Um, again, so it's really early, there's some things that are definitely missing. Uh, I'd like to see monsters uh, that aren't, you know, that are specific to D&D &D, uh, be included, and hopefully that's something that will happen in the future. Um, but I just kind of want to show off what we have here available at this point in time, uh, as well as just kind of give my basic thoughts on it. Uh, so I'll keep updates with this as the next waves come out. I'll keep an eye out for uh, you know some of the feedback uh, that they have for it and see what changes come up. Uh, like I said, I just kind of wanted to get a basic idea of what this is out so that people can kind of understand what's available and what's not at this point, uh, what things are missing from the options that are currently available. And, uh, you know, again, I think this could be a really cool uh, series of tools once everything's all uh, said and done. Uh, again, it's also kind of weird that it uses the Twitch um, as a login, but I'm sure they have their reasons for it. Uh, anyway, I hope you found this video useful uh, as an idea of what's available so far for this. Uh, let me know if you've uh, also taken part in the open beta, what you think. Uh, if there's anything that you think you you know could be added or some things that maybe don't necessarily need to be there. Uh, anyway, uh, like I said, I just wanted to point that out, and I uh, hope you have a good. I uh, hope you enjoy you know using this. Uh, I think it's going to be kind of cool. Uh, I may have to start using the laptop at the games. We'll see what happens. Uh, but until next time.